Hello, and thank you for joining me on another episode of the Finish More Music podcast. So I've got a really exciting show for you, something that I've been looking forward to for some time. You will remember that I recently had a fantastic guest, Bushwhacker Matt Benjamin, on the show. It was one of our most popular shows, had loads of you reaching out to me to say how refreshing it was to hear Matt talking openly and honestly about the challenges and the struggles of being a creative and being at the top of the game. And we talked during the show about something that he was working working on with his partner Belinda that was coming up that will positively impact creatives. It's a new offering, a new service they've got. Well, it's about to drop. So I'm delighted to say that they're joining me today and we're going to go much deeper into it. Very profound. You're going to absolutely love it. I'm not going to ruin it just yet. We'll get into it throughout the show. But Matt, Belinda, thank you very much for joining me. Hi, Key. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. It's great to see you again. And uh, just thinking how enjoyable it was last time around. So it's a pleasure to be back. Thanks for having us. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. So I'm excited to get into this. But first, like, how are you guys doing uh, at the moment? And, you know, how are you feeling about the fact that this this new service, this new offering is about to drop? Exciting, daunting. Um, <laughs> yeah, we are. We, uh, we're still tweaking everything so but we've put a lot of work into this for a very long time and you know it started almost 18 months ago as as, as the beginning of our conversations for for this project um so it, it's, it's like a baby that's sort of just it started off as as no idea became an idea and then started <laughs> forming and now it's about to be born you know I think what's interesting is that, yeah, as you said, we started the idea 18 months ago and so much has happened since that time, but this feels like the most perfect time to be launching it, to be honest, with the therapy and meditation. Yeah, totally. I agree. So, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about sort of the pandemic and the things that are going on at the moment, because I, I think you're right. This is you know, optimal people need what you're offering right now more than ever. But just in terms of creatives in general, um, I think they face a bunch of, I'm going to, I'm going to say unique. I think that's fair to say challenges compared to a, a lot of other people. Creativity is a, can be a fickle beast overall, but in both of your experiences, um, what do you view as the the sort of key challenges and the things that people face both in terms of their creative output but also as performers and traveling and all of those things um i feel some of the biggest pressures for creatives one of them is that we live in a society that values constant productivity churned out the same every day and i really believe as creative beings, we work on a more cyclical kind of um, level. Like sometimes that inspiration strikes you and you're just all day in the studio or whatever you're doing and time stands still and you just get so much done. And that flow state or part of the flow state is really allowing yourself like rest, um, time to kind of rejuvenate. And then another cycle of that creativity can hit. And of course, we're all extremely unique in how things work for us, but that is how my creativity works. And I find it very stressful if I have to be in an environment where I have to churn out X amount every day. And I feel that's really strong in the fabric of our society. And um, it really affected my own mindset and creative levels for a long time until I gave myself permission to really tune into my own flows. And, you know, meditation was obviously really um, a big part of that realization for me and giving myself a, a bit of slack. So that's been probably my biggest personal experience and what I see with other people as well. Yeah, and, and I hear what you're saying. I mean, creatives do have, uh, they're very renowned for having a multitude of ups and downs, even, you know, throughout the space of one day, you know, we, we can go internally from, you know, feeling like that sense of achievement or that, that sense of accomplishment is, is happening in flow. And it can very quickly go to, uh, you know, a sense of low self-esteem, uh, anxiety you know uh that feeling of i'm not worthy it's not good enough um and also you know feeling like we need to be 
on par with what other people are doing that are in our in our industry and you know how social media plays into that now for for creatives as well that might be looking you know especially at, you know in this this year in 2020 and, and they can't really go out and tour and do anything and you know they're, they're, they're looking online it's the only way to like connect externally and seeing all this stuff that other people are doing or have done and how that's then playing with their own creative process you know how am i going to stay relevant how am i going to get back out there again why didn't i do what those people did you know and so there's there's all these questions that can come up in the creative mind that can be quite damaging to to our self-esteem but can also take us away from being creative Mm. Yeah. I think when you touched on that, so it was also the people pleasing factor and not everyone is going to, not every single person is going to like what you do. That's, you know, it ha happened a lot um, in my own experience, having to take on criticisms sometimes from people. Um, but I was working with a client recently who is a music producer and DJ and um, I suggested that she make a track like just for herself and she's just like, wow that's so alien i'm always thinking about what are other people gonna like is this gonna fit in and i think that's also a massive um constrictive factor for creatives so there's there's just so much information that they're trying to take in and and be on that people pleasing yeah totally i mean it's it's interesting you mentioned rest as well because literally the last episode of this podcast i did was all about rest because i'd i'd moved away from it i'd moved into the kind of hamster wheel that you're talking about where i was all about productivity productivity create 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 had to get a load of stuff done and i could feel the negative effects on me and it was weighing me down very heavily and i had to take a breather and i wasn't able to rest and i didn't realize it because every time i would do something that was rest you know i'm fine if i go away on a holiday obviously i wasn't really resting because the feeling of restlessness mm -hmm. was there and it was so strong that yeah but you should be going and getting on you should be doing this which again is kind of talking to what matt was saying about sort of giving yourself a hard time and the low self-esteem it's like what are you doing sitting around here doing nothing you should be getting on you should be doing this so i guess this both of these things are playing in even heavily now that we have the pandemic because people don't have the connectivity that they once would have had so there's a lot of isolation and as you mentioned seeing things on social media might be for a lot of people the only or the main input and stimulus that they're getting which can be pretty damaging at the best of times but what do you view as being the the additional challenges now that creatives are facing when already as we said there's a little bit of a tightrope and it can be a bit of a roller coaster i think that um human connection is a huge one and i think we need to think you know if you talk about today things could be a lot worse. Uh, I, I'm thinking back to March, April, where it, it looked really bad with the pandemic and the lockdown was a real lockdown. There was, you know, you stayed in your house, you didn't go out and we didn't know how many people were going to die or how quickly. And, that, you know, so on top of whatever else you might be going through in your life, creative or not, you had this whole huge fear and uncertainty going on and then it's sort of play, how it's played out throughout throughout the year of people sort of trying to get back out there again trying to find ways trying to find ways to be allowed to connect with their music in particular like performing whether it's live bands whether it's djs whether it's people that want to go listen to live bands and djs the fans you know i mean let's not you know, let's not completely make this all about, you know, the, the producers and, and the DJs. What about the music lovers that that want to enjoy everybody else's creativity and, and how that sort of played on people and, and you know, brought uh, anger, you know, fear and anger and more frustration. And, you know, I think now we're at a point where, you know, there is a bit of hope, but we're not there yet so it's like how do we how do we navigate this period the period where it sounds like we might all be allowed to go and connect again quite soon but allegedly these the, you know these numbers are going up and people and more people are getting sick and you know so so how do we kind of navigate our way through that and i and i think that 
those challenges, particularly for touring musicians, uh, artists, DJs, anyone who works in that industry that involved putting on these events, being part of them, staging them, you know, like the, you know, the engineers, the, the roadies, the, the bar staff, everybody, you know, how, how can they navigate this period where they're not allowed out? We don't know when we'll be allowed out. We think we'll be allowed out soon, but we still don't really know. And I think in, in the last, you know, couple of months, it, it, people have started to get incredibly frustrated and stressed. Yeah, I think it's um, like, obviously everything you said there is true and it can be a double edged sword, the uncertainty. It can take you down that path of like doom and gloom. I don't know what's happening. It can also open up. Well, what, you know, what do I want to change in my life? Uh, do I want to be creative in a slightly different way? Um, so there is, you know, that energy of both the closing and an opening, depending on how you want to move through it so I, i've seen a lot of people it has actually um slightly changed <laughs> the direction of um of what they're doing with their creativity and their music which has also been really inspiring i've seen lots of people up level with their training and doing amazing things online so it's yeah i can definitely see both sides there yeah totally it, it makes perfect sense because i think with the uncertainty there's the we can easily fall into sort of the problem framework of we start to make predictions about the future and they, you know, if they're predictions of doom and gloom, which is easy to do and then ruminating on it, you can kind of get stuck in that kind of downward spiral. And particularly then if you're on your own and if you're, you start to sort of filter out good news and see all of the bad stuff on the internet, that can be a nightmare. But as you said, Belinda, and one of the things that I talk to our community about all the time, is what if we tried to shift from a problem focus to an opportunity focus? What if we said, okay, yeah, this sucks and this sucks and this sucks, but like, how do you use that time to level up your skill set? What could you do differently as a creative? What avenues are there to explore? We know that things aren't perhaps ideal and they may be not as we want them to be, but we can live in that feeling of everything is is bad and difficult or we can try and navigate a different more empowering more inspiring route forward which i think is going to play nicely into what you guys are offering overall now so kind of the big unveil i guess what is about to drop how does how does it all work let us know please so yeah as we mentioned earlier um this kind of started about 18 months ago uh, we're launching a company called Listen Up Therapy, and Listen Up Therapy is our offerings uh, of meditation, meditation practices and teachings, which Belinda is a uh, incredible uh, master of, and has been following that path for many, many years. And therapeutic practices from my end, which is psychotherapeutic counselling, um, from myself and my team, and. Um, so what we're offering is the complementary benefits of therapy and meditation and we are aiming them at uh, the creative industries we both have a lot of history in creativity and you know in those industries one way or another and uh, have both had profound experiences of how our lives can change and transform when we use both meditation regularly and some kind of therapy and how that's just been an incredible experience and we feel that we've got a lot to to offer people in terms of giving them these opportunities and being able to use our own experiences and uh, knowledge to improve people's lives yeah totally now i, I kind of want to deep dive a little bit into your backgrounds because one of the things that i think is so powerful and i just want to lean on one thing here because you've mentioned listen up therapy but i love the the wording that you guys have got listen up and listening listening up for the therapy listen in for the meditation it's it's that for me is kind of genius so i'm gonna put it out there right now it really is superb uh, how you've got those two phrases and they're both you know they're so strong they say very succinctly what it is all about which we'll go into in a bit more depth in a moment but 
one of the things that you guys are bringing to the table that as far as I know, nobody else is, is the background that you have and the experience you have, because yes, there's a million meditation things out there. There's loads of apps and things like that. And they are, they're good. I'm not going to take anything away from them, but having somebody who actually is in this world, in the music world, who understands the people who is designing courses and training that is tailored towards you know the very people that that need it in this case i think is very powerful and the same obviously for you matt with your experience in therapy um can you both speak a little bit to sort of your backgrounds in this area as well because i I know you've both been on like incredible journeys that have benefited both from therapy meditation and so on but can you sort of chart the path a little bit for everyone because i think it's fascinating um, yeah, sure. So to my meditation journey, I'll start from where that kind of began because that was also my, my dark point. And obviously all of us at some way in our past seem to have that. And it's from that dark point that we turn around and, you know, we start looking for answers. So, you know, 10 years ago, I was um, here in London working hard and partying just as hard, if not harder. And like, you know, a lot of people that just wasn't um, sustainable for me, but the party was a real escapism because I was feeling stressed about life. Um, On paper, everything looked great, but I just felt really empty and not happy inside. And um, so it was from that space that I started, um, you know, looking for something. I didn't know what it was, but it ended up being meditation and I traveled for two years and um, met a lot of amazing people and tried lots of different things and then when I was in India um, I found a really amazing ashram that just I had this recognition when I was there it was like oh wow I didn't really know what I was looking for but I've got this like um, insight inside me now that it's like okay I needed to come here to learn these tools Um, And I guess when I started learning meditation, I had almost this uh, cultural stigma of like, oh, okay, I need to live like a monk now (laughs) and I can't go out. But like music has been a passion for me, you know, ever since I can remember as, you know, as a toddler, I was playing my dad's record player and touching all the themes. I I just love music. And um, a big part of my journey was actually being like okay enough in my individuality and my confidence that I was going to still resonate with the things that lit me up and made me feel good. So that was still, you know, being able to go out in a club, even though I was sober and feel really comfortable and confident in myself, and really enjoy myself and then feel equally okay. You know, when I was, you know, going into the meditation environment and this was 10 years ago, I think this is much more acceptable now, but, Um, that was a big part of the journey just like that confidence to really be in my authenticity and not feel like I have to submit to any um, social ideas about what a person who meditates should be or and things like that and I think that's really important for people a lot of people who I work with they have an issue they might be you know DJing in a club and they still feel really self-conscious about not drinking even though that's their path they're like you know when someone hands me a drink i don't know what to do and part of it is really building that just like rock solid uh, confidence in yourself that you feel okay to say no that things aren't right for you um and so that's been a big part of my journey just the meeting of those two worlds really yeah, I think that's really powerful what you're saying as well. The the concept of because I used to DJ as well, and and there were many times when I was like, right, I, I won't drink tonight, and then I did. You know, I would go out, and it's it's just it embeds you in that environment, and so having that self belief, and and I guess I I always talk about awareness. I think that's so powerful. That's something that meditation brings you, but being able to have the awareness and not get swept up in the moment to actually come out with the outcome that you wanted at the end of the the night or, or whatever you're doing. I think super, super powerful. Um, so Matt, obviously we know a bunch of your background, but you've, you know, I know you've had, uh, you've had meditation as well as part of the therapy going on. I, we didn't discuss that last time, how those two things intertwined for you. Yeah. I mean, for me, my inroads into meditation uh, began quite a long time ago. I, I, I would 
take a little bit of an interest. I, I you know, I meditate from reading some books. I, I, I was quite interested in Buddhism for a while, uh, which I still have, um, you know, a strong connection with a lot of the, the principles of Buddhism. Um, but I, you know, I did dip in and out with, with various uh, journeys with meditation, just, just a little bit. And then with my musical journey and as, as a touring DJ and my rock and roll aspect of my life that went with that, I was in and out of recovery from, you know, drinking drugs. I, I was trying to get clean and sober for many, many years and um, with various degrees of success. So I would have quite long periods of clean time, but then I'd go back out and party hard again and then pick myself up and go back and in and out. And uh, in the summer of 2015, things had got pretty bad for me. Um, and so I, I did something I'd never done before and took myself out of the loop and went off to, uh, to rehab in, in Thailand, a place that was recommended to me by, by a dear friend. And I stayed there for six weeks. And while I was there, there was a very strong message uh, that connected for me, connected counseling therapy, mindfulness and meditation and more. Um, and it had a profound impact on my life. I've never looked back. So, you know, while I was there, once, once the first week had combined the dust had settled, I started meditating every day um, in my room. I was also doing one-to-one -one counseling. I, while I was there, I was, there were group counseling sessions. There were mindfulness and meditation uh, teachings. And there was yoga nidra as well, which uh, we can talk about a little bit more in a bit. But there was a combination of all these things. And what I found was that doing these things every day changed something in me. I, I started to really feel the benefits of, of how, how the meditation is giving me more clarity, everything I can see things more clearly. I, if colors are brighter, sounds are, are more defined, um, my mind is quietened down a little bit and then to coming out of meditation and then doing things like counseling, I started to get more of the benefit from the counseling because I was more grounded. And that really uh, kind of sparked this interest in me in, why we are the way we are, why we do the things we do, what makes us tick. And, you know, some of it was cognitive behavioral therapy based counseling as well. Um, when I left, I, that, that interest never left me. So I signed up for, um, eventually, I, I was reading books on CBT and, and eventually I signed up online to do a, a psychology degree um, with the Open University. And I, I ended up changing direction and doing a master's in psychotherapy, which I'm still doing. I've taken a gap year to launch Listen Up Therapy with Belinda, um, but I've qualified uh, as a psychotherapeutic counsellor. And so, you know, the journey continues, but really coming back to, to Listen Up Therapy, it was that profound experience of a combination of meditation and therapeutic practices like counselling and then the yoga nidra as well, which was uh, a real journey, um, which I feel has got me to a point where I've been able to completely change my life. I've been able to do a 180. I've been able to do that 180 and, you know, go in a completely different direction, but still have my roots in music and still be very passionate and very connected with that world. But before I went on that journey, I was stuck. I, I couldn't see the wood through the trees. And I think one of the things we really want to be able to offer people is a solution to not being able to see the wood through the trees, a solution to being stuck, you know, tools that will allow you to, to become unstuck in a good way, you know? Yeah, totally. And the, the, one of the things I'm sort of picking up from both of you is, you know, you've both been on this journey. And one of the sayings I love is transformed people transform people. You've been there, you've been through these things, you were able to bring this, you understand very, on a very deep level the people that you're working with. But the other thing that's really jumped out to me there is that 
this isn't a case of, hey, we've been on this journey and we're, now we're going to help you. You're both very much invested in continuing to grow and learn and deepen your practices. So you're constantly leveling up. You're already at an amazing place to help people. But it's like, this isn't just a thing, you know, that we've learned and we're going to teach. We're in this. We live this, basically. Yeah. And, and you know, I had to say, Belinda, is she's incredible. She never stops learning. She's all day, every day. At every uh, spare moment, uh, it's got a head in a, in a book or, <laughs> or in a talk or a course or a podcast. Or, and it's just constant uh, continuing uh, personal and professional development. And it, you know, it blows my mind how, how devoted she is to furthering her knowledge and her quest, her, her you know, curiosity and her thirst for so all of these things that really excite her yeah. it's just amazing i've been really lucky to uh, be able to find some yeah amazing resources and teachers um the ashram i go to in india is basically like a university for meditation um i've got like 30 different levels that you can wow. do i've done like 19 with them but uh you have to wait three months you know minimum between each level so they're really encouraging to you to digest and take what you've learnt like back out into life and um yeah after 10 years of studying it you just find that it's just infinite <laughs> there is always more things to learn you're always learning more things about yourself and um yeah meditation is such a, a broad topic um you know often people think oh it's just one thing i'm just sitting here and breathing but uh there are so many different lineages and so many different techniques and um it's an infinite journey into yourself even though a lot of us use it for for relaxation you know you can you can take it a lot further than that yeah totally so i think that kind of leads us really nicely into each of the, the sort of separate disciplines if you like and then we can talk about the, the synergy of the two and um, obviously myself having an ongoing kind of mindset coach therapist that I work with plus meditating. I, you know, I can definitely speak to this with you guys as well, but if we just focus on the, the meditation side of things, and I know that you'll be offering courses. There's also a chance to work personally with you because as you said, this, this can be nuanced. It can be, it can fit to the person. If you like, it can be really bespoke. Um, what do you feel are, are sort of the main benefits that creatives take from a meditative practice um yeah there's a few here i i think again i'll talk from my personal experience sometimes uh me personally i can really overthink things i know this is not for everyone but my i have a very busy and active mind and sometimes i have like a million ideas on the go and this really kind of leaks out a lot of my energy and then through my meditation practice it's almost like i'm bringing all that energy back in i'm re resetting brain waves you know we can get in, into that like you have quite busy um brain waves of what we call beta so you know they're high and you're not in a very good learning state when you're in those beta brain waves but in meditation you naturally drop down to an alpha or a theta and it allows you to think in a more clear way. So I think that's why when I'm in meditation, it allows a lot of things to kind of be sifted out. And then I'm left with a clearer state of thinking afterwards of like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna pick up on this idea or this is how I'm gonna continue it. So it's a great reset when you're in a creative process and your mind is like, okay, don't know what to do next. And you're almost like stuck. Um, I definitely always take time out to meditate or go for a walk at that point just to reset my mind um and leading on from that i get pretty much all of my <laughs> creative ideas um maybe not when i'm in meditation but afterwards as well you know they come to you at different points um so again it's my stop gap if i'm working on a project and i feel either i'm dry for ideas um you know before i was speaking about having too many ideas but if i'm dry for them i will I will come into that meditative state and just come into that rest state that you were you were touching on earlier as well um yeah so it's my source of creativity it's a source of quietening my mind i guess they're like the, the two main things and also 
when I'm in meditation, I'm kind of exercising or increasing my awareness and that can help me often connect dots between different ideas that other people might not see. So um, sometimes other people say my work's a little bit eccentric or eclectic and they're like, wow, I never would have thought of that. You put this and this together. And I think that also can come from the increased awareness um, for meditation. Like instead of just looking at one thing in front of you, you've got like a 360 degrees awareness. Like you're just seeing more things in life when you're out and about and it's like, oh, okay. So yeah, there are a few different ways how it helps me creatively. Yeah, I love that. So kind of what I'm hearing is, is in many respects, it helps you to get out of your own way which is easy to do as a, a creative when the mind's firing off and you start to try and over solve things in your head. And it's just, as you said, can't see the wood for the trees. And by taking that step back, you're, you're clearing all of that and letting the, the ideas, the sort of flow come through you. And um, now one of the things that I think a lot of people would have tried meditation and potentially tried something and decided it's not for them but as you mentioned there are there are multiple kind of uh, strands and, and disciplines and things like that which of course when it comes to working with you on a, a bespoke level um of course you're able to help guide people but can you just talk a little bit to to that as well this idea that some people will just sort of pick it up give it a go and chuck it away because maybe that particular type didn't work for them but perhaps a, a little bit about the variety of different techniques that are, are available yeah sure um well i'll just start with very very traditionally uh some of the meditations were designed for for monks that had done years of yoga and years of discipline and this was kind of like the mountaintop of their experience you'd say so that would be things like you know a zen meditation or you know just sitting and watching your breath so they already were having quite a disciplined life they weren't having <laughs> some of the challenges that we may have today so for them to sit and be still, you know, they'd, they'd done a lot of training for that. So when, um, you know, someone from our modern age just tries to sit down and meditate, like we're plagued with, you know, overthinking about so many things. We have so many more decisions that we can take in our life, which in one way is amazing, but also really stressful. Like people back then would just be like, okay, my dad, uh, looks after horses so that's what i'm going to do <laughs> they weren't sitting there thinking like oh which you know career path should i take and where should i live so it was a much more simple time and um you know within recent years there has been uh some people create new and different meditation techniques like active meditation where you do movement beforehand um that is a type that i, I teach um as well where you're actually moving your, the body and movement techniques and then when you do sit down it's just so much easier to connect with yourself and also in the the listening meditation course one of the techniques that i share is um how you can come into a state of relaxation relatively quickly so i think what's really important is how you are priming yourself to get in what i call the meditation bandwidth so the meditation techniques aren't the meditation per se that's just the preparation to get you into the state that I, I like calling the meditation bandwidth where you feel connected and you're just in flow and you're there so we need to find techniques that kind of suit where we're at so for example one day if you're feeling angry <laughs> it might be hard to come even straight into your heart if someone's doing a heart focused meditation you might need to do something to diffuse that anger first because otherwise it's not a vibratory match and that vibration of anger needs to be released before you can sit and be calm i mean it's the same when people come to my active meditation classes if they've been working all day and they're frustrated they need to release that and then once that's released it's much easier to come into this state of balance um and then finally i just want to share like you know especially creatives will get this we're all creative in different ways we're all very individual we're all very unique and so what works for one person doesn't work for another person and even inside the meditation experience how we uh experience our inner senses it's also going to be different for different people. Some people are very visual when they go into meditation. Other people don't see anything but 
they're very kinesthetic they feel a lot or they hear a lot or they have a clear knowing and um you know for me i'm not so visual in meditation so when i if i was starting out and i went to a meditation and they were talking about visual stuff i'd be like i can't get this 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 i, I can't do it um <laughs> so when we're nurtured um just like with our creativity that we all have these individual skills that is a massive light bulb moment for a lot of people that i work with and they're like oh okay I've, it's been working in a different way for me but i needed someone to shine a light on that so i could see it for myself yeah well basically i'm just gonna kind of leave a wow in there so i've done meditation for a while i had no idea of the depth of <laughs> like the things you've just said i'm like oh yeah kinda, i get that and that makes sense like I'm really interested. I'm gonna say it right now. I'm gonna be really interested in working with you because I what I can hear as well is that although I I love my practice, um, it can almost certainly be optimized, and I can take more from it just from listening to to what you're talking about. So even people who already are meditating and not just people who've tried it and thought maybe it's not for me will actually be able to take a lot by going deeper and exploring different techniques they didn't know were there. Certainly, this idea of matching a particular technique to the state that you're in, I think is really powerful because there are certainly times when I sit and I find it really, really difficult. And now what you're saying is making me think, oh, wow, there are pieces to the puzzle that I'm missing here. And I'm a huge, huge advocate of uh, meditation. It's been huge for me. So I, like, I really want to learn more of this. And speaking from my own experience, I've tried various things. My first introduction to it was a book that I have. Is it Visapana? Is I pronounced that correctly? The... Vipassana. Or well, they say it with a sh in the Vipassana is how we... There we go. So, yeah, I, I, I had a book and I read that and I used to sit back when I worked in the city for like 20 minutes in the morning and that was kind of watching the breath. But I struggled with it. I'm not great at watching the breath, it turns out. Um, I've tried things like Headspace, you know fantastic app but the the sort of guided meditation thing wasn't as great for me and i found personally the most effective thing is just having a like chimes a kind of gentle sound and maybe it's because i'm i'm you know my my whole job and everything i've ever done really is around audio is where i thrive i seem to be able to much more quickly get into the state but the other things you're talking about like fascinate me so i'm dead excited to to learn more on a personal level it sounds absolutely superb um so matt therapy let's talk about sort of another piece of the puzzle here i think people have predetermined ideas about what therapy is maybe there's some stigma attached to it as well without actually really truly understanding what it is and what the benefits are so can you sort of tell us a, a little bit about what the you know being involved and in working with a, a therapist is and does and i know obviously you've had experience from both sides of the table so to speak sure well yeah you know you're right there are lots of different types of therapy there there are lots of different types of counseling um and people often come in wanting to change something about themselves. They're not, there's something they're not happy with, there's something they're struggling with or they're stuck with. And it's very uncomfortable a lot of the time. And what can happen quite often is, is people want a set of tools very early on. They want to know where's the instruction manual? How do we, you know, what, can can you tell me what i need to do to fix this you know so there are people that offer that kind of therapy i mean you know the short the short term the cbt work of uh, cognitive behavioral therapy is very solution based in terms of looking at your core beliefs about yourself you know for example if you believe that you're not good enough or the world is out to get you that's a core belief how do you challenge that? And uh, what can you tell yourself about that, 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 that counters that belief about yourself? So, so, but the thing about things like CBT, it's a bit of a band-aid quite a lot of the time. It will kind of patch over something until the plaster falls off and then, you know, the scar's still there. Um, so the therapy, really, it can be a lot of things for different people. But first and foremost, I think it's important to know that it's a safe space a neutral space, non-judgmental space for you to be able to come and talk and 
talk about whatever it is that you feel you need or want to talk about but you know a lot of people struggle to find someone to talk to that is neutral non-judgmental and it and is in a safe space you know because we all need uh relationships and friends and 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 we have you know various experiences with that but you know when you start throwing opinions um you know advice giving conditions in that's not the same as therapy it can be quite helpful but you know therapy is really about exploring what's going on for you what is it that you believe about yourself that is leaving you seeing yourself the world and others the way that you see them so what's your story what's what's your belief around self and others what's your sense of safety in the world like where has that come from you know what is it that you've learnt um or been conditioned to believe that makes you feel that all these external factors or things that are going on inside you make you feel the way you feel and so you know it's it's it, i suppose in some ways it can be a bottomless pit you know that that you can spend a lifetime looking at these things and particularly when it comes to identity you know if i'm not um a product of my environment if i'm not uh my artist persona if i'm not my my dj persona if i'm not my you know this is who i am because of what i do persona then who am i and what tends to happen quite often when people are faced with the idea that they're not the person they identify with from a couple of years ago or 10 years ago, and they're in that transitionary period where they're ready to make a change or they think they're ready to make a change, but they, they realize that if they make that change, they don't know who they are. That often gets people running off in the other direction. And what I feel my job is, and the job of the therapist is first and foremost, is to create a strong, solid working alliance, a therapeutic relationship with the client, some somewhere where the client can come and know that that relationship is based on trust, it's based on experience, and it's based on being listened to. And I think one of the things that happens so much now in society more than ever is people don't really listen to each other. You know, you know, you might even you might get as far as hello and then the listening stops when you're out in social situations people only you know they only want to connect the way they know how how many times have you been in a you know in a restaurant or a cafe or anywhere and there's people sitting together but they're all looking at their phones or they might be in the middle of a conversation and a text message comes through and the conversation ends and you know there's that that lack of connection and, and with the therapy you know it's really about listening and i suppose you know it ties in with you know listen in and listen up but you know it's a place to come to be listened to to be heard and to be able to help you look at how you're experiencing yourself and others in the world and what that might look like from a different perspective what's stopping you from moving on in your life why are you getting stuck where are you getting stuck why what's happening for you you know yeah totally i think that's what you were talking about about being heard is really powerful because there is so much noise in the world at the moment um but people do need to to be heard and even if you are heard by someone that you know a lot of the times they have and when i say they have an agenda i don't mean that necessarily as a bad thing but if you have relationships with people and there are things that that they want from their lives as well advice may come from a slightly biased place whereas when you're talking to a therapist so when I, I talk to the lady that i work with as well there is that bond of trust but there's all there's someone there who, who doesn't have a a, a hand in the game anywhere they're actually they are totally neutral as you said and so you know that the questions you're getting asked and the place they're coming from is very pure which i felt i personally find to be very powerful um now the other thing that i think is maybe we can go a little bit deeper with there matt which you sort of touched on at the end which i think is really important is that people are often looking to make a change or there's something that they really want and they're very passionate about achieving in their life but no matter how hard they try they seem to be kind of in their own way 
And often what they want is totally achievable, but the beliefs and the story that they're telling themselves is is the very thing that's stopping them from getting what they, they want. And it's only really them. So for me, I found, you know, um, like therapy and work with my mindset coach to be really powerful in aiding that, but perhaps you can talk to that a, a little bit as well and your experience on that side. Yeah, I can. And, you know, everyone's very unique and individual, but, you know, we have, a set of beliefs that and those beliefs have, have, have come from they've been inherited at some level that from and you, you know from our caregivers and what what tends to happen is that we live out our lives in the here and now reinforcing our beliefs about ourselves our, our script we're living out our you know we're reinforcing our script beliefs so out of consciousness we will set the wheels in motion or we will run through a series of of of, of transactions of, of of interactions that will then confirm what we really believe about ourselves which you know might be you know i'm never going to make it i you know or or you know i should you know i should be seen but not heard or you know there, there are you know a multitude of these beliefs that we we pick up in early development and you know th this can be pre-verbal uh, you know this can be before we're walking and talking you know it it doesn't mean and this is really important in my belief it doesn't mean that our parents are bad people necessarily at all that's not you know this can be a product of being smothered being loved too much or being like you know have been wrapped in cotton wool so that you know you're you've been so protected that you then don't know how to experience others in the world because you've you've always had somebody else there protecting you too much there are lots of different factors that can play into it but but what what uh, the the point is that you know we we a lot of the things that we do are played out to confirm those beliefs. Mm -hmm. and yeah, and done out of out of our consciousness. So I think what you're saying there is like in the in our conscious mind, we're like, yes, I'm great. I've got all these affirmations all day long. Um, but the conscious mind does make up five percent, and the unconscious mind is the ninety five percent. And, um, you know, this is where, you know, the work Matthew does, especially when you're going into psychotherapy is really subtle, but profound because, you know, that is being able to, um, to be dug up. And then I guess from the, the meditation perspective, it really comes into, um, its own with this because we get out of our conscious mind when we're doing the meditations and, um, this can be a really rich place to sometimes plant uh, an affirmation, like at the end of a meditation, because you are in a, a different state of consciousness. And then there's another um, more specific type of laying down meditation that's called yoga nidra, it means yogic sleep. And one of the many, many um, kind of purposes of this practice is actually to move through self-limiting beliefs, which in the yoga tradition they call samskaras, which is all programming, whether it's, you know, good or bad, we all have programming to some level, as, as Matthew was saying, it happens at different levels of our life. Um, but yoga nidra is another really big passion of mind. And the science behind the practice is that we do, um, you know, drop brainwave states, we're able to access that, that state of our 95% unconscious. And the part of the practice is that you do drop in um, an affirmation. It's an I am statement called a Sankalpa. So if your main script, um, to use the, the language Matthew was using before, is I'm not worthy, then your Sankalpa might be like, I am worthy. And when you're dropping it in at that deep subconscious, over time, it really starts to take root um, and this has been really profound for both of us. Like Matthew mentioned, he was doing this when he was in rehab as well, mm. because as you said, it is so frustrating when you've got the affirmation there all day long <laughs> and you're like, why are things not working? And that's because this, you know, 95% of us in this unconscious state. I love this. So I, I want to kind of dig in a little bit deeper. Okay. So uh, in which one of these are we saying that in the the therapy is where you tend to 
bring these things from the subconscious mind into the conscious mind and then yes we there's a, a sort of saying isn't there that we we what we can't see or what we're not aware of we can't fix basically so is that bringing it forward and then the yoga nidra is where you uh can deepen the practice by kind of over helping to overwrite or redress the balance of the limiting belief with the empowering belief or do both of these practices bring forward these things from the subconscious mind so just just keeping a line down the middle of, of these practices um and the reason that i think we both you know well i've, I've had a profound experience of of doing meditation and, and yoga nidra and, and counseling and how that's ended up you know it's, it's been very very powerful but just you know for me talking about the therapy side of things i don't go into the unconscious with my clients because it's the unconscious they're not conscious of it that's you know it's it's one thing you know me as a psychotherapeutic counselor knowing and having an awareness that that might be what's going on but really you know it's about what's happening in the room between us what's happening in the space between us what's not being said is what's being said so there's the there's the the verbal transaction and there's the non-verbal transaction there's the ulterior transactions that's going on between you and where you know what i look at you know within the therapy is where is that coming from is that coming from an adult place is it coming from you know is it coming in the here and now as an adult is it coming from a parental uh message that we've received as we've been growing up or is it because is it coming from a child state you know from from a child ego state where is that coming from and how has that been experienced and you know that's really a lot of, of, of where the work happens is is what's happening experientially what's happening relationally what what's going on between us why do i feel sad right now what is it that what's happening here and and we explore that you know we explore that and and really you know work into to what might be happening what's going on so there's content and content is important but process is is really really is really really important and it's when over and this is why you know therapy can you know is often long term it's you know when the same things keep coming up over and over again but you've been working long enough with the client and build up a strong enough alliance and and uh, you know you know them well enough to be able to start to sort of pull it apart and say well you know this experience you're having right now you know it connects to these beliefs that you have about yourself and these beliefs that you have about yourself have come because x y or z have, have said x y and z to you you know mm -hmm. or this is part of you know your conditioning you know so it's really about untangling that and allowing someone to look at something from a different perspective. Right. And totally. That's the therapy side of it. You know, the unconscious it's, it's all there and it's all happening, but that's not where I go. Whereas as Belinda just said, with a lot of the practices that can open that up, which is why doing both of these things can be so powerful. Yeah, totally. I mean, there's a, there's a real synergy here now. One of the things that um, you've uh, you put on your website was a window of tolerance. Now, I don't know what that is, but I was like, I've got to ask. I'm, di I'm dying to know. So it's something that I know that the, the synergy between both of the, the different disciplines that you have um, feeds into this. Can you explain that a little bit for me, please? Okay, it is. Um, so the window of tolerance is like a, a space where we feel like we can really respond to life. Like you have energy, something bad happens in your day and you're like, okay, you know, I've got this or, you know, a challenge at work. And you, yeah, you feel like you have that energy to respond. And in the, the diagram that often accompanies this term, underneath that window uh, is a place where we're feeling really low in energy. It might be a depression, um, but where we just don't have any energy to respond to life. Like, you know, sometimes we wake up and the alarm clock goes off for work and you just depress you. I just can't get up. I don't care. Like there's, you know, there, there's a lack of energy there. So someone can be coming to you saying the house is on fire, but you just can't respond. 
And then above that window, there is a hyper arousal state, which we kind of touched on earlier, the overthinking, the anxious. And again, you're, you've got so much energy and you're scattered in a way, you're not able to really get any traction or respond to life. Someone shares um, something with you they need help with and you kind of just freak out and have a meltdown. So that's kind of <laughs> explaining, I guess, the spectrum. And so the window of tolerance is the kind of sweet spot in the middle where we're like, okay, I can, I can handle what's happening in life. So the reason why this model is kind of explained or used is that we, uh, or people want to encourage others to get into the window of tolerance. And the way to get back is generally through mindfulness, meditation and grounding. So whether you are hyper aroused or hypo in the examples, when you come back to your breathing, you are putting more of your energy back into your body and not leaking energy out. And as you start to get more energy and breathe, um, you're more able to respond to, you know, whatever's going on. And I think people sometimes overlook the power of breathing because <laughs> because it happens for us all day, every day. Um, but on one of the free resources on the website, I have a simple breathing exercise, but I explain when you're breathing into your belly, you know, we've all heard like, oh, you should breathe into your belly. It actually does um, signal to your nervous system, I'm safe, I'm okay, I'm all good. Um, so people often use this example when we talk about stress and stress response um, of, you know, the caveman and the saber-toothed tiger and the stress. And so our ancient nervous system, um, when we saw a tiger, we'd be running. <laughs> And when you're running, your belly's not soft, you know, your diaphragm and your abs are in tight and you're just, you know, running for your life. So when we're not breathing into our belly, that can be signal to our nervous system, like, oh, we're in, we're in stress, you know, and it, it actually creates um, those stress chemicals in the body. And it's such an epidemic that we don't <laughs> breathe into our belly because it's societal conditioning to look slim and a slim flat stomach or our fashion. Um, just so many things like, you know, in a lot of my old jobs, I wore such tight clothes. There was no way I could breathe into my belly properly. And that in itself can put us in a state of um, anxiety, like all the time. So when we breathe into our belly, that can help us bring us back into this window of tolerance. We come into the rest and digest mode, our parasympathetic nervous system, and we start to have more energy rather than leaking it out. So that way we can kind of feel like we can deal more with whatever life is dishing up to us that day. Right. I get it. And I'm imagining that if someone is able to sort of find themselves in that state, would that be a, a more ideal state to be in like Matt in a therapy situation as well? Well, well, the window of tolerance is, you know, that, that model is, is referred to within therapy as well. And, you know, we think about hyper and hypo and, 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 you know, really we want to, we want to widen that, that window so that, you know, the, there's, there's more room to be in there without reaching those states. And, and, you know, that, that, that comes from a lot of exploration and, and, you know, over a long period of time, but it's really about understanding where those feelings come from, you know, and when you start to be able to understand where those feelings come from and really understand that they don't serve you in the here and now, those, those defense mechanisms that you had when you were little to survive, because when you were, you know, you know, a baby or a little kid, and, you know, if you didn't use those defenses, you couldn't get through, couldn't get by in life. They won't serve you now as an adult in the here and now, but we still hang on to them. And every situation that comes along that brings up those same feelings is connected to that defense mechanism. And so, you know, really when you start to understand that those feelings are not relative to what's going on in the here and now, because you needed those defenses, then you've got other ways of, of, of experiencing life now, then your window of tolerance can grow. You know? Yeah, totally. So what I'm I'm really hearing here is, you know, you can hear the the benefits of of therapy, the benefits of meditation. When they come together, it's super powerful. But every step of the way, I'm constantly listening to this, thinking, yeah, I can totally see how this helps someone who's a creative, who's able to 
now we're talking about potentially have more energy because a lot of people also have day jobs as well that are creatives or at the moment they're just they're they are more stressed out the world that we're living in at the moment is stressful you're able to get out of your own way have more energy get into a better creative or a better uh, state in order to access your creativity all and then obviously when you are creating things and, and that you have got the output and you're not jammed up it kind of feeds back into itself a little bit as a cycle you sort of feel better and this whole cycle keeps going to make your I guess your life more relaxed more enjoyable and more more energized and all of these things are feeding into each other would that be a, a, a good summary it would and but I'm, I'm also thinking quite broadly that you know the issues the presenting issues of the individual coming into therapy won't always be directly related to their creativity or to them being creative it will be a multitude of things you know and that's that's life that's how life goes you know um where we're coming from is is you know with this not therapy you know is our our deep understanding of that world and what it's like to be at different ends of the spectrum within that world at different times you know and so this isn't just about getting people back into their creative flow it's a lot lot bigger than that really it's really about you know giving people tools to navigate life in all in all walks of life really yeah i just think when you're feeling more uh balanced in all the ways even though that's quite a bland word that is gonna spark your creativity you know like when you feel good about things in life when you're mentally balanced emotionally balanced spiritually balanced like the creativity is like the flower that that comes out of out of all that work that you're doing so um, whether it's something in the subconscious or an overthinking mind or a relationship that is causing you stress. I think mm. that all has knock on effects to creativity. Mm. And, um, you know, the work that we're doing is going to have, you know, many, many benefits for people. But I think, you know, when I'm in my, or for me anyway, when I'm in my creative flow, that's when I normally feel like, okay, my, my self care is good and everything's really going uh, well, and the creativity, yeah, is like the, the flower expression. It, it is, and you know, let's just talk about music for a minute, and I, I don't mean, you know, techno, but uh, songs. I mean, most songs are about love, and a lot of songs written about love are written by people who are in some sort of pain through some kind of uh, relational experience, you know, and that's part of the amazing creativity that comes out of strong, really strong emotions, whether it's heartbreak, sorrow, anger, in being in love, happiness, you know, and, you know, as you know, you know, being able to channel that's one thing, but so, uh, you know, the, the creative block can come, you know, uh, all different times, but really this is, this is about, you know, how can you use these tools? How can, how can, you know, therapy help you? How can meditation help you in your life? to ground you and give you, you know, more, more presence, more awareness and, and allow you, I, I, I feel very strongly from personal experience that meditation, regular meditation that has been, you know, carefully like put together and, 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 and shown to you from Belinda, who, you know, who's had a huge amount of experience in this can allow you to benefit from everything else in your life but the, you know and the therapy as well you know if you if you're meditating regularly and that's helping you become more grounded and more aware you're going to get more from your therapy because you're going to be more aware you know and so that's the cycle really yeah, yeah. that's really important i just want to touch on as well with the creativity thing because my friend sent me it was a post she posted the other day about a, a story that some creatives have that i need to be in emotional pain or i need to have some kind of drama going on in my life and clients again have come to me for this they're like but i need that that's my creative source and um this particular post was talking about like a, a new paradigm or a new idea that uh, we don't have to hold on to this story that we need pain to be creatives, that it can come from, uh, you know, the other end of the spectrum as well. And I just thought that was a really interesting point for discussion because there are so many things embedded in us um, that things have to be a certain way for us to be creative. 
Yeah, totally. And I, I mean, just to sort of talk to the the cycle that Matt was mentioning, that really taps into my own experience as well with this. So what I have found is that when I've uncovered, you know, kind of core beliefs, you talked uh, to the idea of I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough, and all of these things. And when the they that's kind of a tree that's got a lot of other core beliefs that can be hanging off of it and when i've discovered those through re reflection for example and then go into my meditative practice and exactly as you were mentioning i you know had no idea of the yoga nidra and so on and just in my normal meditative practice i will then be looking at the i am that's reversing these things and so that then deepens the work for me very powerfully but then often i'll have an insight somewhere in the meditation or just after it that i will write down and then take back into the session that i have with my coach and we'll talk about that and so that cycle really resonated with me because it has and you know i mentioned this to you guys before but i once said to my um to my mindset coach i said you know i love the work that we're doing we're redressing this in a bully in a coach kind of balance because i've always given myself such a kick in i used to work in the city i was a headhunter very competitive sales environment and i used to think that i was successful because of the the negative way that i talked to myself like someone constantly poking me with a stick uh, to drive me instead of the carrot it like someone's jabbing me which was myself and i thought that that was always the key to my success but of course it's taking a lot of my energy and ruminating and beating myself up it, it drains you it's not aiding you but it was all i knew so now that i i know that actually turning up for myself as a, a companion is is way is a way stronger way to do this but as we were redressing the balance i said to my coach look you know i'm really studious i i want to do well here how do i speed this up and her kind of piece of wisdom was you don't speed this up but there are things you can do to deepen it mm -hmm. and it turned out that the meditation has has absolutely done that and i have so much more awareness about myself i've got a long way to go i'm not i'm not kidding anyone with this it's i think you mentioned as well it's a never-ending journey but there's a lot way a long way for me to go personally but the way that these two things have fed into each other as it's they are far greater than the sum of their parts has been my experience and definitely saying i'll lean into and as i mentioned i'm i'm definitely keen to to find out more belinda about the meditation side because i you've sort of opened up a whole new world that i didn't if i'm honest no existed and there's just me sitting here for 20 minutes sort of listening to my chimes and that's been awesome but the things you're talking about i'm like wow how exciting to get to explore this world in even more depth so i'll definitely be tapping you up on that front so right now how do people because i'm sure loads of people will be like yeah you know i'm really excited to find out more about working with you guys what will be the next steps for people now well, if anybody is interested, uh, the next step would be to to go to our website and um, you know have a good good look around, and they can contact us through the uh, inquiry form. There there are links into Belinda's courses. There's there's lots of information and rich content there already about the meditation. There are um, you know lots of there's lots of information about the the team of therapists and we will we will take it from there we'll, we'll come back to people and arrange consultation calls and talk about what they're looking for what they're hoping to get from what, whichever service it is that they would like to to get involved in uh, whether it's therapy or meditation or both and we will we will then put them in touch with the right therapist or into belinda's meditation course and also we will be in the very near future, we'll be doing some group work as well, which uh, I'm not going to talk too much about now, but we're going to be offering group kind of support, well-being mindset um, courses for people that are going to be very, very useful. There'll be a lot of shared experience and a lot of connectivity, because I think one of the things that we are aware of that has been the most challenging for people right across the board has been uh, lack of connectivity because of everything that's happened this year as well and so you know getting like-minded to get uh, people together in a group and us facilitating it 
bringing in both of our shared experiences and allowing that to kind of help people to find their way a little bit is something that that we're working very hard on so that's coming soon as well yeah awesome i love the the way you're both kind of constantly innovating and coming up with new ideas and certainly from i can definitely sort of say how powerful this online connectivity is because obviously finish more music is a community and the community have come together more than ever this year because of what's going on externally people leaning into it and it's a safe space which exactly what you guys have already spoken about with what you're offering as well but it is a safe space we don't have any egos nobody flies around belittling anyone else even though some of them are you know really far on their journeys you know some people are are professionals um in the electronic music uh, industry now and everyone is really supportive and it's made a hell of a difference even when we just jump on live to hang out just that connectivity is so important so again you know i mentioned last time when you're on matt that i thought you're onto something with this which you definitely are and i have absolutely every confidence that what you're going to do from a group angle is going to be a success as well i think it's amazing so look, i wish you guys every success with this we'll put all of the details in the show notes for this podcast as well so everybody can instantly dive in and, and and see anything is there anything you feel that we've missed that you'd like to to cover i know we've we've covered a bunch of stuff it's been awesome thank you i just want to make sure there may anything that i may have missed you may have missed along the way we get covered off because it's such an important topic just one thing for me and that is that if anybody's you know struggling and is a bit hesitant to reach out just reach out you know reach out we, we're going to be available to have a consultation, to have a chat, you know, and if you're feeling it, you're feeling it. But, you know, if you're struggling and you're a bit stuck or, you know, you've got stuff going on, you know, reach out to us. Don't be afraid to pick up the phone. Don't be shy. Don't be uh, nervous to, to, you know, to send us a, an inquiry form and, and tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, this is, you know, we're doing this to help people. We're doing this to help as many people as we can. You know, we want... You know, we know what it's like to be stuck in so many different ways and we want to help people. So, you know, don't be shy. Yeah, awesome. And one of the things that always comes across when I'm talking to you, how authentic you are as well. Um, So, as you said, no people don't have anything to lose they're not going to be judged in any way it's obviously completely anonymous if people just want to have that initial conversation i think it's such a powerful thing to do so i'll echo that you know you guys are awesome unquestionably and 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 just just to to follow that on if someone wants to come and talk to us because they've got problems with being shy then maybe they can get one of their friends to uh, apply for them right (laughs) (laughs) awesome stuff well listen thank you it's i I had a a feeling this was going to be insightful. I didn't realize how much. I mean, I've learned an absolute bunch and I know that everyone's going to love this. As I say, the last time you were on such a a popular episode, um, I would love to catch up with you again to see how this is going at some point in the future as well. And particularly as I mentioned, I know you're both really innovative and you're thinking of new ideas. So what we have now is awesome, but the things that you learn i instinctively know you're going to develop this to help more and more people and this is going to grow so i definitely am going to touch base and drag you both even if it's screaming and kicking on for an episode in the future but you've been awesome thank you very much thank you so much thanks guys take care and best of luck with it